talented man. That's right. Y'all ready? Mm -hmm. Ready? All right. Just thoughts on being here and getting ready to roll for the bowl? I thought we had really good preparation in Columbia. I mean, guys worked extremely hard. I thought we had a really good attitude, and that's that's a lot of it. I mean, guys buying in and, uh, you know, very pleased with where we are. We need to have, you know, three good work days here in uh, Birmingham. Everybody make it back and schedule? Mm -hmm. as, far, as far as I know, you know, we had some of the guys that are closer to Birmingham that we're still checking in right now. We've got a team meeting here in about an hour and a half. What have you uh, seen out of Coach Latina? And how, and how he's worked with the offensive line? Well, I think, line. you know, obviously there's a lot of carryover between him and Coach Roper uh, in their days at Duke and at Ole Miss. Uh, so from a terminology standpoint, there was a lot of carryover for our players, and there's no changes made as far as those things are concerned. You can't, you can't make those changes in a week. Uh, but, again, I think uh, they did a really good job, really proud of our players are buying in. And, uh, I told our guys, you know, you guys all want to go play in the NFL, you better get used to coaching changes. You better get used to liking somebody else. That's part of part of you know if you really like it. If you're, you're in the fourth week of the season and the Seahawks trade you to the Broncos, you better you better like the other guy. And that's part of adjusting as a player and, uh, and understanding that part of it. And, you know, again, Sean did a fantastic job at South Carolina. But John's been you know, really good for us. A couple of the <coughs> offensive linemen said that um, Coach Latina changed a couple of things, taught them some new techniques. Is it anything do you, that you think we'll recognize and see? Well, I mean, nothing earth shattering, I can assure you. Uh, everybody's got their different ways to approach. I'm sure the way I coach secondary is a little different from how somebody else may want to coach the secondary. It doesn't mean that one way is right, one way is wrong. It just means maybe your point of view. And I told John to go in and coach him the way he felt was best for him and best suited for him. And, and uh, I think he did a nice job. Is everybody pretty healthy overall? Any, any injuries? Yeah, as far, yeah we, we, we don't have any injuries coming out of Columbia. How game ready are you in terms of your preparation for South Florida? Uh, how much more game prep you do here? We do all the game planning in Columbia. So we had four camp-like practices. We had four game week-like practices. And uh, so everything's done. There won't be anything added here. Now you've got to get here and refine it. And we'll have to remind some guys today about some things that they forgot over the break. But, uh, but that's part of it for these next three days. And, and some of the players in talking with them said it was a very physical bowl camp. Uh, did you really kind of put the, put the pedal to the metal? Well, we try and be physical every day, you know, whether we're in the season or not. But uh, you know, certainly the physicality of our program's got to be good. How do you get the guys to block out some of the, the bowl festivities, some of the fun that surrounds a game like this that they typically don't see during a normal game week? Well, I think the big thing is, is there's a time to focus and there's a time to have fun. And generally, the more mature teams are the ones that win the bowl games because they understand when to focus and they understand when to have fun. And that's what I've challenged our guys to do. In Columbia, when we asked them to work, they worked. We asked them to have fun, they had fun. So that's what we try and do. What do you think a win in a bowl game would mean in your first year to turn it around, get to a bowl game, and then go seven and six and have that fifth straight bowl game? Well, I think you know, having a fifth straight bowl would be huge for the program. I think always ending the season with a win and going into the off season makes you feel better about where you are. Uh, regardless if it really matters or not, that's just the way you feel as a human being, you know, as a person, as a coach, as a player, as a competitor. Uh, but having a winning record after three and nine would be a, a huge step forward for us. And, and I think our guys understand that. They understand what's at stake. Uh, but again, our preparation in Columbia was really good. So we'll, we'll, we need to continue here. Bentley still the starter. Yes. Mm -hmm. Did McElwain do anything in the bowl camp to move up and earn more, more playing time? No, he didn't. I thought he had an outstanding camp. Continues to improve. And I'm very pleased with Brandon Mills. Last time we talked to you, you, you said that you were going into kind of a self-scout period and, and you were learning some things about the offense, some things you may want to do differently. You know, what, did, did you learn anything? Do, you, do we expect to see anything different uh, in this bowl game? Well, I think you know, there'll be some subtle changes, some things we want to do. But you got to watch the game to see that. Any academic metrics? None. None sure. The guys did a really good job. We did right at, I think, a 2 8 cumulative for a football team, which is outstanding. Um, but Maria Hickman and her staff do a phenomenal job and really do a great job supporting the student athletes. In, in game planning for Flowers, uh, I mean, what do you do from a defensive standpoint to try to contain him? Well, I don't know that you're going to contain him. He's going to he's going to hit some runs. I mean, that's that's what good players do. But he's a guy that uh, you, you got to keep relative contained, meaning you got to keep in the ball fenced 
you got to keep him inside. You can't stop your feet on contact. You've got to run your feet on contact. We worked a lot on open field tackling, which we do we do all the time. So it's not like all of a sudden we started working on it. But um, those are things to me that you know, he is really elusive in space. But Marlon Max elusive in space. So is Rodney Adams. They've got several guys that are, that are that way. So they've got a bunch of very talented players that have done a very good job recruiting good good skill and speed. Would you, would you call him a poor man as Lamar Jackson? He's not. He's nobody's poor man. Will, how much does it help that both teams have played East Carolina in, in scouting what USF does? I don't know that it's much carryover at all. It was in the middle of the season. It was the third game of the season for us, and I think the fifth or sixth for them. So, uh, you know, there's some things as a coach you can look at and compare to what you thought of East Carolina and, you know, their strengths and weaknesses, but I don't know that there's going to be much carry off the game. Do you think there's going to be uh, anything different about the way USF runs their offense with, with Taggart going? No, I think that, you know, what they've done, they've averaged over 40 points. I hope they change a bunch. <laughs> you know, they've averaged 40 points a game. They haven't averaged, been under 30 the entire season. So, yeah, I hope they change a bunch. That'd be really, be really smart. <laughs> You told us uh, Thanksgiving was a meal. What is your take on Christmas? No, it's a great time. I, 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 people took that and ran. Uh, but you know, when you're in the, when you're in game plan mode in Thanksgiving, I mean, it is a meal. We got a game, uh, so uh, but Christmas is a great time. Uh, Carol and Whit and I and Jackson and I had a great day and just, just hung out at the house, which we don't get to do very often. So it was awesome. How good do you feel about your team coming out of the practice of Jones? Well, I feel good, but again, you know, we got to carry it over to Birmingham and the distraction of being in a bowl site and being in a hotel and having a lot going on, and, and our guys need to handle it the right way, which I anticipate they will. Were there any young guys who, who stuck out to you a little bit? Did you learn anything about some of the freshmen who have been on the scout team that you're going to count on for next year? Well, I think, you know, again, we, we got a, a good collection of guys that have been redshirted, but, uh, you know, Sedaris Hutchins is a guy who jumps out at you. Tyson Williams is a guy that jumps out at you. Got to continue to find some guys up front defensively that can sustain and do it down in, down out, which is always an issue with big guys in my history. So, but, but I thought we had some guys step forward. T.J. Brunson, who's played for us this year, I thought had a really good camp. Um, so there were some guys that stepped forward. Thanks, coach. All right. Thank you.